Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course analysis of variance and design of experiments. So you can recall that in the last lecture, we had uh, started uh, a discussion on the intra-block analysis of variance in balance in complete block design. And uh, we had uh, calculated all the basic ingredients uh, for the intra-block analysis of variance using the expressions from the incomplete block design under the setup of balance incomplete block design. So now we are in a situation that we are going to implement all these expressions for the computation of various sum of squares and we will try to develop the analysis of variant test for a BIBD. So, just for your recollections, we are trying to construct here the analysis of variance for the null hypothesis about the equality of treatment effects, not for the block effects. So, now uh, let us try to have a quick uh, revision of the results that we had obtained in the earlier lecture, so that we can use them in this uh, lecture. And after that, we are going to find out the expression for the adjusted treatment sum of squares, unadjusted block sum of squares, SSE and TSS and based on that, using the same theory and same concept that we had used in the case of two-way analysis of variance in the beginning of the lecture of this course. We will try to develop here the test statistic for the analysis of variance in this case. After that, do you remember that when we considered the two-way ANOVA, then we had uh, two options that our null hypothesis is going to be accepted or not. So in case if uh, null hypothesis is not getting accepted, it is getting ejected, then we had developed a peer test. That means we were trying to develop a sort of multiple comparison test based on the T statistics. And if you try to recall, we had used the concept of critical difference or common critical difference in the case of two-way ANOVA. And we had developed those tests in the case of one-way analysis of variance. So that also we will try to do here that how are you going to conduct the null hypothesis about the equality of the two treatment effects. And after that, uh, he will try to just understand how can you estimate the missing observation in the case of BIBD. So we try to consider here the intra-block analysis and some other related topics. So just for your recollection, we started with the two-way model y i j is equal to mu plus beta i plus tau j plus epsilon i j, where i is going from 1 to b, b is the number of blocks and j is going from 1 to v, v is the number of treatment, mu is the general mean effect, beta i is the fixed additive i th block effect, tau j is the fixed additive j treatment effect and epsilon i j is the identically and independently distributed random error, which is following a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square. And uh, we are using here the uh, same notation that we used earlier, that we are going to the going to indicate the block totals by B i, which is equal to summation over j, y i j. We are going to indicate the treatment totals by V j, which is summation over i, y i j. We are going to indicate the adjusted treatment totals by Q j and we are going to indicate the grand total of all the observation by 
capital G, which is the double summation i over j over y i j. Right. So, now we are going to consider here the null hypothesis about h naught tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau v. So, in this case what we were trying to do, we had considered the two way model, uh, we had obtained the normal equations and then we had expressed them in the form of a vectors and matrix uh, symbols and then because we are interested in the null hypothesis about the equality of the treatment effects. So, we are going to eliminate the block effects from the normal equations and we are going to estimate the treatment effect and that had uh, given us the reduced normal equations uh, or the intra block equations of treatment effects as q is equal to c tau hat. And then after that uh, we had uh, proved that rank of c is not full rank right because c is a matrix of order v cross v. So, the rank of c cannot be equal to v because the row sums and column sums in the c matrix they are equal to 0. Then uh, in the setup of uh, BIBD, uh, we had obtained the diagonal and off diagonal elements of the C matrix. So, we had uh, obtained the diagonal elements of C matrix say here C j j as r minus r upon k for j goes from 1 to v. The off diagonal elements of C are obtained as C j j prime is equal to minus lambda upon k where j is not equal to j prime all are going from 1 to v and we also had obtained the expression for the adjusted treatment totals as q j is equal to v j minus t j upon k and j is going from here 1 to v. And in this case we had introduced one more symbol this here t j where t j is equal to this summation which is written here is i and inside the parenthesis we are writing here j this is over b i where this symbol of summation like uh, this one which is here like this one, this is indicating the sum over uh, those block containing the J treatment that we had discussed in the last lecture. And then we had obtained the C matrix in case of B i B d as uh, like this one C is equal to lambda B upon K i minus E V 1 into E V 1 transpose divided by V. And using the concept of Moore Penrose inverse, we had obtained the generalized inverse of C matrix here as say lambda v upon k into i v and then we had obtained an estimate of tau using the reduced normal equation q is equal to c tau here as say tau hat is equal to generalized inverse of c into q and which was obtained here lambda v upon k into q. So, now, after this we are uh, is going to start that how are we going to conduct the intra block analysis of variance in the case of B i B d. Right. So, the null hypothesis that we are going to consider here is h naught tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau v and against the alternative that h 1 that at least one pair of tau j's is different from others. Now, what are we going to do? You know the ingredients of analysis of variance are the sum of is square due to treatment, sum of is square due to block, sum of is square due to error and total sum of is squares. Now we have understood and I have explained you couple of time that uh, in the case of incomplete block design when we are interested in it testing the hypothesis about the treatment effects that is h naught tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau v. Then in that case uh, we are going to obtain the sum of is square due to treatment, sum of is square due to block, but out of them sum of is square due to treatment is going to be adjusted and sum of is square due to block is going to be unadjusted. That you have to keep in mind very important point. Why? Because when you are trying to partition the TSS into SS treatment plus SS block plus SS error, then these terms are going to be orthogonal when one of them between SS treatment and SSR 
they are ad adjusted and unadjusted. So, we take here that SS treatment is going to be adjusted and SS block is going to be unadjusted. So, now this gives us the final conclusion that we are going to find here the sum of square d2 treatment which is the adjuster version that is adjusted sum of square d2 treatment and unadjusted block sum of squares. Right. So, do you remember that when we did the incomplete block design, then we had obtained this expression that adjusted sum of square due to treatment is given by tau hat transpose q. That was in the case of a general incomplete block design. And now you can see here, you have here a special setup, the setup of balance incomplete block design, where you have some conditions on the parameters, there are some ways in which you are going to assign different treatments to the different blocks and based on that we had obtained the expression for tau hat. So, this will come out to be here as say k upon lambda v q transpose q and uh, now you can see here q was here a column vector of the like here q 1, q 2, q v transpose. So, now this q transpose q can be written here as a summation j goes from 1 to v q j square. Right. So, now this is your here sum of square due to treatment which is adjusted treatment sum of square. Right. Now, once you are trying to find out the treatment sum of square to be adjusted, so obviously the block sum of square is going to be unadjusted and if you recall in the case of incomplete block design, we had considered this unadjusted sum of square due to block that was obtained there as a summation i goes from 1 to b, b i square upon k i, but now k i here is actually k because that is the required condition in the b i b d. So, I am writing out here summation i goes from 1 to b, b i square upon k minus g square upon b k. And the total sum of squares that will remain as such that double summation uh, over i and j on y square i j minus the correction factor g square upon b k. And obviously, the sum of square due to error that will be obtained has say s s error inside parenthesis I am writing here t which is equal to here s s total minus s s block which is unadjusted and adjusted treatment sum of squares. Now, you can obtain these things very easily. So, now if you can recall the theorems that we did in the beginning of the course and then we had developed the F statistics in the case of two way analysis of variance, we can use here all those results that uh, these sums of square due to treatment and blocks, they can be expressed in the form of a quadratic form and uh, they are going to follow a chi-square distribution and then adjusted sum of square due to treatment and SS error, they are going to be independently distributed following a chi-square distribution with the required number of degrees of freedom. And the degree of freedom that we know that uh, in the case of sum of square due to treatment, they are simply v minus 1 and in the case of SSC that is b k minus b minus v plus 1, right. So, now I can use those results here directly because I believe that you can prove all those results and at least you know that how those results have been obtained. They are not coming from the sky, but they are coming from the basic statistical theory. Now, so using those things, we can uh, write here that uh, SS treatment upon v minus 1, that is the chi square random variable divided by degree of freedom and SS error divided by the degrees of freedom. This is going to follow a F distribution under H naught. Right. So, if you try to simplify it here, this will come out to be here k upon uh, lambda v right into b k minus b minus v plus 1 divided by v minus 1 summation q j square divided by s s 
error. Right. So, this k upon lambda v is coming because now we are trying to substitute here the SS treatment here in terms of summation q j square divided by this uh, lambda v into k. So, now we can find out the decision rule that if this statistics here f I am writing here f t r that means f statistics for the treatment. If uh, this is greater than the tabulated value of f with v minus 1 and b k minus b minus v plus 1 degrees of freedom at alpha level of significance. If the calculated value is greater than this tabulated value then S naught is rejected. And this completes the analysis of variant test and this is termed as intra block analysis of variance. And whatever you have found here all these results can be compiled into the intra block analysis of variance table for testing the significance of the treatment effects which is given given here as like this one. So, S naught here is tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau, tau v and we have obtained here the sum of square due to treatment, sum of square due to block, sum of square due to error and total sum of squares. So, we have uh, divided the total variation in the observations into between treatment which is going to be here the adjusted sum of square due to treatment. Between blocks which is going to be here the unadjusted uh, sum of squares due to blocks and then whatever is the error component that we are calling here as a intra block error. Now, you understand why we are trying to call it as intra block error because anyway after some time in the next lecture we are going to talk about the interblock analysis and recovery of interblock information. So, that is why I want to now discriminate here between the two errors and then you are trying to obtain the sum of square due to total that will remain as such as it was case in the earlier analysis. And then by subtraction you can obtain here the sum of square due to error. Then the corresponding degrees of freedom for the treatment is v minus 1, for the block this is b minus 1, for the total this is b k minus 1 and for the error this can be obtained by subtraction that is the degrees of freedom of total sum of squares minus the degrees of freedom uh, for the treatment minus the degree of freedom for the block sum of squares. And then we try to find out here the mean square you can see here since you are interested in the test of hypothesis related only to the treatment effects. So, you are going to obtain here only one mean square due to treatment which is indicated by here a mistreatment. So, that is simply sum of a square due to treatment which is the adjusted value and divided by the degrees of freedom and you are going to find out here the MSE which is based on the SS error. T, T means treatment, right. So, then now you are going to take the ratio of the two and that is going to give you here F statistics. So, now you can see here that in this, uh, this terminology here is term here SS error I am writing here see here T in the subscript. So, now you can understand because this intra block analysis can be done for, uh, for the equality of the treatment effect, for the equality of the block effect. So, in this case because we are trying to consider here the treatment, so I am writing here T. And in case if uh, you want to conduct the similar analysis of variance for the block effects, then that sum of square due to error is going to be different. Then the sum of squares due to error which you have obtained here. That is why I am indicating this here by say T. So, T means here treatment, right. So, now you can see here that uh, we have now completed the intra block analysis of variance for the treatment effects. Now, if you want to develop the intra block analysis of variance for the block effects also, that you can do on the similar lines. As you have obtained here the generalized inverse of C, in that case you will have to find out the generalized inverse of 
D matrix. The D was coming from the reduced normal equation for the block effect, which was P is equal to D beta. So, you need to find out the generalized inverse of D because we had already shown that D is also going to be a ranked efficient matrix because all the row and column sums in the D matrix, they are going to be 0. So, at least the rank is going to be deficient by 1. And based on that, you have to find out here the beta hat. Once you obtain the beta hat here, then you are going to obtain the adjusted block sum of a square, right. As you have obtained here this expression in the case of treatment effect by tau hat transpose q. So, similarly the expression for the adjusted block sum of a squares will be beta hat transpose p. Now, you can see the roles of uh, see here p, q and c and d. You simply have to interchange them and then you try to substitute the value of beta hat, try to obtain the adjusted block sum of squares and then uh, for the unadjusted treatment sum of squares, you have to use the earlier approach just like you have obtained the unadjusted block sum of squares in the case of s not tau 1 equal to tau 2 equal to tau v. Similarly, you have to obtain here the unadjusted treatment sum of, sum of a square in case of h not beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta v. Then after this, the total sum of a squares that is going to remain the same TSS, right, I mean double summation y square ij minus the correction factor. Once you have obtained these three things, then you can obtain the sum of a square due to error by subtraction. So, now you can see that sum of a square in sum of a square due to error in the case of uh, the testing of block effect is going to be usually different than the sum of a squares due to error in case of the null hypothesis about the treatment effect. So, that is was why I am trying to write down here S S error T and similarly you can write down there as a S S error B. And based on that, you can then you can write down the F statistics for testing the block effects. So, now you can see here at the end, I can conclude in the case of incomplete block design, it matters what you want to test. You want to test the treatment effects or you want to test the block effects. And depending on your objective, then you have to suitably choose the adjusted treatment sum of a square or adjusted block sum of a square. The rule is very simple. Whatever hypothesis you are considering corresponding to that sum of a square is going to be adjusted and the other one between treatment and block, the other is going to be unadjusted treatment sum of a squares. And after that, total sum of a square remain the same in both the cases and the sum of a square due to error is going to be obtained by subtraction. So, there is no issue. So, that is why this analysis of incomplete block design and particularly this BIBD, they are different than the analysis of variant that you used to do in the case of complete block design. And this is usually the point where many students get confused that why this is happening. So, I have tried my best to explain you here that why do we need here two different analysis of variance tables when we are trying to conduct uh, the intra block, block analysis of variance. And if somebody asks you to, to give the complete analysis of variance, so that means you simply try to find out. Um, the sum of a square due to treatment adjusted, sum of a square due to blocks unadjusted and also try to find out the say one of the the sum of a squares as an as adjusted versus unadjusted and then try to use the the relationship that we use earlier in finding out the expectation or an estimator of the say sigma beta square 
So, once you have obtained the intra block analysis of variance, you can obtain the different sums of phi square using that relationship that sum of phi square due to treatment adjusted plus sum of phi square is equal to block unadjusted uh, plus SS error is equal to say sum of phi squares due to treatment unadjusted plus adjusted sum of phi square due to block plus SS error. From there you can find it out. But then in that case you have to give the both the analysis of variance table, one for treatment and another for block. Right. So, now we have here the rule that under what type of condition you are going to accept or reject the hypothesis. So, if the hypothesis is accepted well and good, if not then you would like to know that which pairs of the treatments are creating this trouble. So, now we try to develop here a test for testing the equality of two treatment effects. So, we are going to consider here a null hypothesis like H naught tau g is equal to tau j prime. So, now in case if you want to develop this type of test of hypothesis, can you recall that in the beginning of the course uh, we had developed uh, a test of hypothesis for H naught mu i equal to mu j or say H naught beta i equal to beta, beta j where we have used the t test. So, that test I am going to use here and the same test we also have used when we discussed the, the critical difference or common critical difference that was CCD in the case of one way analysis of variance. So, the same thing I am going to apply here, but for that we need to first find out the variance of the estimates of say tau j hat minus tau j prime hat. Okay, so, we come to our lecture back and uh, now we are trying to say that uh, okay, in case the null hypothesis is uh, rejected, then we go for a pair wise comparison of the treatments. Right. So, what we want here that in order to develop this type of test, we need an expression for the variance of the difference of two estimates of the treatment effects. Like as if I have here the elementary contrast like tau j minus tau j prime. So, we need to find out the variance of the estimate of tau j that is tau j hat minus tau j prime hat. Right. So, after this we try to consider the variance of an elementary contrast which is of the form like tau j hat minus tau j hat uh, prime. So, we try to find out its variance. So, now in the first step we already have found the tau hat in case of B i B d is given by k upon lambda v into q. So, this tau j hat is going to be q j like case here. So, I try to substitute here the values of tau j hat and tau j prime hat here like this. So, this will become here k upon lambda v into q j minus q j prime and now we try to open it. So, this will become here k square upon lambda square v square variance of q j plus variance of q j prime and uh, this will become here the covariance between q j q j prime right. Now, if you try to recall you had done the proof of here expected value of q and you had found the covariance matrix of q right. You had proved that expected value of q is equal to c tau and you had found the covariance matrix of q here say sigma square c. So, this means when we are trying to find out here the variance of q j that is simply going to be the jth diagonal elements of the c matrix. So, this will simply become here c j j sigma square. Right, because if you try to see here in this covariance matrix, sigma square will be here, there will be here c 1 1, c 2 2 and so on and here there will be some c i j's. So, obviously, in this covariance matrix, uh, the j th diagonal element is going to indicate the, the variance of the j th 
element that is your here qj. And similarly, if you want to find out here the covariance between say qj and qj prime, this is simply going to be here the cjj prime times sigma square. So, this is coming from this result. So, but now you can see here uh, earlier you had proved this result in a general incomplete block design, but now uh, we are considering here only a particular type of incomplete block design. So, this result will remain valid here also. So, I can write down here that variance of qj is equal to here cjj sigma square, variance of qj prime here as say cj prime j prime sigma square and covariant between q j and q j prime as c j j prime sigma square. And now, you already have obtained the values of c j j and c j j prime in the case of b i b d, right. So, what I can, can do here that I can write down here, say here c j j is equal to here, say here r 1 minus 1 over k that was r minus r upon k and c j j prime here as a minus lambda over k like this. So, once I try to substitute here these values, this c j j and c j j prime, they are going to be twice of r into 1 minus 1 upon k and uh, minus twice of c j j prime will become here say plus 2 lambda upon k and this sigma square will remain here. So, now if you try to simplify here this expression, this will come out to be here 2 k upon lambda v into sigma square. But now you can see here that this expression depends upon this sigma square that is unknown to us. So, we cannot uh, use this uh, variance uh, in the uh, real data application. So, one simple solution is that we can obtain an estimate of this uh, sigma square and we try to use it uh, in the place of this variance here in sigma square. So, remember we are indicating this variance here as a v star, right. So, this is v star is going to indicate the intra block uh, uh, variance of the elementary contrast of treatment effects. So, now the question is how are you going to obtain an unbiased meter of uh, sigma square that you try to uh, recall that we already had obtained an unbiased meter of the sigma square which was your here mean square due to error that was sum of square due to error divided by the degrees of freedom. So, I can write down here that sigma square hat is equal to SS error which is obtained for the treatment effect T divided by the degrees of freedom b k minus b minus v plus 1. So, an unbiased meter of v star can be obtained just by using this sigma square hat in place of sigma square in v star and we can obtain here v star hat which is now here 2 k upon lambda v into s s error in the case of treatment r tested divided by the degrees of freedom like this. So, now if H naught is rejected, then we make the pairwise comparison and use the multiple comparison test. How? You can now define here the T statistics. How to define the T statistics? How to develop the T statistics? That we already had done in the beginning when we developed the test of hypothesis for testing H naught beta i equal to beta j, right, in the case of a linear model, general linear model rather. So, now to test H naught. So, in the case of uh, this analysis of variance, a suitable statistics can be derived exactly on the same way. This will come out to be here T is equal to say k into b k minus 1 minus b minus v plus 1 divided by lambda v into q j minus q j prime divided by square root of s s error t. You can see here this q j is something like a normal distribution and s s error t this is something like a chi square. So, all those conditions of the t distribution are fulfilled here and so this t statistics follows a t distribution with b k minus b minus v plus 1 degrees of freedom under h naught.
So, now use uh, you who can use it and you can develop uh, here the pairwise uh, comparison of uh, different treatment effects and based on that you can develop the multiple comparison test also. Now, you can see here as soon as I come here on this aspect, you have done several multiple comparison tests also. All those concepts, all those tests they will come here and if you wish, you can use them here. Now, definitely they are going to create uh, some more issues, so that you need to understand how to handle them. But in principle, there is no problem in implementing any of the multiple comparison tests that you had developed in the case of one way analysis of variance in the beginning of the course, right. Now, so now we have completed the intra block analysis of variance and also we have developed that how are we going to conduct the multiple comparison test. Now, before we try to go for interblock analysis of variance and the recovery of uh, interblock information, there are some issues which I would like to address for the sake of completeness. Uh, Sometimes people ask uh, a very simple question that what is to be chosen between a complete block design or an incomplete block design. So, one thing you can now observe very easily, the conditions under which a complete block design is uh, defined and the conditions under which an incomplete block is designed, is uh, defined. Both the setups are different, they are defined under different types of conditions. And the setup they are different, here you are not trying to use all the treatments in all the blocks, so that is going to result in the lower cost in different aspects. But many times uh, people try to compare their efficiencies. So, what we try to do here that we try to consider the randomized block design and the BIBD and just for a while although it will not make uh, much sense, but uh, just for the sake of completeness of the theory part, we assume that suppose there is a condition where the experimenter is trying to conduct the experiment and the statistician has a choice to implement either the complete block design or the incomplete block design. Under that situation what is going to happen? So, this is what you have to keep in mind that the two setups of complete block design and incomplete block design, these are two entirely different things. So, the comparison which I am trying to make here, that is under a very specific type of condition, right. So, let us try to see how to get it done. Simple question that arises is that how a BIBD compares to an RBD, that is randomized block design. So, as I said, that we have to keep in mind that BIBD is an incomplete block design, whereas randomized block design is a complete block design. So, this point should always be kept in mind while making such restrictive comparison, right. So, now what we try to do that we try to compare the efficiency of balanced incomplete block design with a randomized block design, which is a complete block design with our replicates. Right. So, comparison, the, so, comparison of efficiency means we are trying to consider here the estimates tau j, tau j prime like as tau j hat and tau j prime hat and then we are trying to construct an elementary contrast and then we are trying to find out their variance. So, we are going to do this exercise in case of randomized block design and in the case of BIBD. So, we already have actually done this exercise if you try to recall, we already had obtained the variance of uh, tau y hat minus tau j hat in the case of two way analysis of variance in the case of complete block design sites. So, I can write down here that the variance of an elementary contrast under a randomized block design will be like this, variance of tau j hat minus tau j prime hat under RBD 
So this is simply going to be here twice of sigma square upon r, but I am using here a symbol here sigma star square. So I am assuming here just for the sake of uh, understanding that variance of y i j is equal to sigma star square under randomized block design. And this variance is going to be indicated by here v r star. So r means r b d. And then we already have found uh, the variance of tau j hat minus tau j hat prime under the v i b d. So, I try to take the ratio of the two variances which is here like this twice of sigma star square divided by r upon twice k sigma square divided by lambda v and this comes out to be here like this. Now, you please try to observe this expression which is here lambda v upon r k and uh, sigma star square upon sigma square. Now, if you try to see here, we have a term here lambda v upon r k, which I am trying to denote here, see here by here e. This is termed as the efficiency factor of b i b d, right. And that is a very important term, I will try to show its uh, utility again, but at this moment you try to concentrate on this expression part. So, if you try to see here this uh, E, which is here the efficiency factor of BIBD, this can be written here as say lambda V upon RK, which is equal to here V upon K into K minus 1 upon V minus 1. This is obtained using the properties of the balance and complete block uh, design, right, that uh, lambda V uh, times V minus 1 is equal to R times a minus 1 and so on. So, if you try to see here this I can write down here as a 1 minus 1 upon k into 1 minus 1 upon v whole inverse. And since we are assuming in the case of b i b d that v is greater than k, right, because obviously the total number of treatments are going to be greater than the, uh, the total number of uh, plots in the block, otherwise that will be a different type of situation and you are trying to consider here the setup of incomplete block design where the total number of treatments are going to be smaller than the total number of plots. So, in this case, this term comes out to be smaller than 1. So, this actually indicates that uh, this efficiency factor here is, uh, is less than 1. So, if you try to see here, this efficiency of B i B d over R B d, this depends upon here two factors, this E and sigma star square upon sigma square. Right. So, based on that, sometime people try to take here a conclusion whether B i B d is more efficient than R B d or R B d is more efficient than B i B d. But if you try to see the actual efficiency of B i B d over R B d not only depends on the E that is the efficiency factor, but also on the ratio of variances sigma star square upon sigma square. So, there can be situations where B i B d can be more efficient than R B d as a sigma star square can be more than the value of sigma square because V is greater than k, right. So, this is what you have to keep in mind. Now, based on this efficiency factor, I can define here a definition efficiency balance design. If you recall, in the last lecture when we defined the term balance in the uh, B i B d, then I had uh, told you that this balancing can be defined in two possible ways. One is the variance balanced and another is the efficiency balanced. So, we had uh, found that uh, the design is said to be variance balanced if the variance of the pair of estimators say tau j hat minus tau j prime hat prime that you try to consider here the elementary contrast of the pair of two estimates if this remains the same for all pairs of the treatment that it does not depend on the say any other term like a j or j prime. So, now if you try to see here, you had obtained here this term here, this variance here. You can see here 
2 k upon lambda v is equal to sigma square. Right. So, if you try to see here, you had obtained this term here as say 2 k upon lambda v into sigma square. This is independent of j or j prime. So, now can you see here that uh, since the variance of an elementary contrast of the estimators of tau j and tau j prime is not depending on j or j prime, but it remains the same for all pairs of the treatments in this design. Then this is the definition of variance balance and in this case you can see here that the VIBD is variance balanced. Right. So, now in case if you try to see the other definition of balancing that the balancing is defined in two possible ways. This is variance balanced and the other is efficiency balanced. So, now at this moment we are at a stage where I can define here the efficiency balance design because at that time I had told you that efficiency balance uh, definition needs something more and this is here the factor E which is needed to define the efficiency balance design. So, now I can see here that a block design is said to be efficiency balanced if every contrast of the treatment effects is estimated to the design with the same efficiency factor. Right. And in the case of any block design, if the block design satisfies any of the two following property that either it is efficiency balance, variance balance and it has a, an equal number of replication. So, if any two properties out of these three properties they hold true, then the third property also holds true. Right. So, now you can see here you have understood what is the meaning of balancing in the name balance in complete block design. So, now it is complete. Now, you understand why this is called balance and now you understand why this is called as incomplete block design. Right. So, now we are done. Now, in case if you try to recall uh, when we had considered the complete block uh, designs and uh, uh, like as a RBD, we had considered the situation that in case if any observation is missing from the experiment, then one option is that uh, uh, the missing observation can be estimated using the available inf observations. And for that, uh, we can use the missing plot technique. And in this technique, what we try to do? We try to write down the sum of squares due to error, where the missing observation is indicated by something like x. And then we try to minimize the error sum of a square, say SSE. And then we try to obtain the value of x such that SSE is minimized. And we had earlier used the simply the principle of maxima and minima, right, that we differentiated SSE with respect to the missing value, put it equal to 0 and then we had some equation and then we solved it. And we also have understood that if there are more number of uh, missing observation, then you have to uh, use the, that many number of unknown values like as x, y, etc. And then you have to differentiate the SSE for each of the missing values. That is differentiate or partially differentiate SSE with respect to each of the value which is indicated as missing. right? And then you will have that many normal equations and then you try to solve them to obtain the values of the missing observation. And after that you have to substitute those estimated observations in the place of missing observation. So, the data set will look like as if this is complete or as if there was no missing value. And then you try to conduct the entire analysis of variance, but certain adjustments uh, have to be made. 
and the same thing we had uh, illustrated in the case of Latin square design also. So, similarly the same analysis can be done in the case of balance incomplete block design also. Well, I am not going to show you here the entire algebra because that is pretty straightforward and simple, but surely I would like to give you here the value of the estimate that, uh, that if there is one value missing, then how are you going to uh, find out the value of that missing observation. And after that you have to substitute it in the design and then you have to conduct the analysis of variance and then you have to take suitable care in adjusting the uh, sums of squares and uh, degrees of freedom. So, in the case of balanced incomplete block design, if we have one missing observation, say IGF observation is uh, missing, right. So, this uh, missing observation say uh, we are indicating here with here say y i j that can be computed by this expression which is here v r into k minus 1 into b i, b i is the ith block total k into k minus 1 into q j, q j is the, the value of the adjusted treatment total minus v minus 1 into q j prime. So, q j prime is the sum of those uh, the q values for, the, for all other treatment, but not the gth one right which are present in the ith block and divided by k into k minus 1 into b k minus b minus v plus 1 and then you can obtain here the value and uh, you can substitute it in the data and you can conduct the analysis of variance. All other procedure remains the same. Right. So, now we come to an end to this uh, lecture and uh, now I have given you a complete idea of the intra block analysis and BIBD. Now, the next aspect is how to conduct the inter block analysis and then how to conduct the recovery of inter block information. So, you can recall that when we had uh, learned about the inter block analysis, I had uh, developed the entire analysis and at that moment I had told you that we are going to use these expressions directly over a particular type of design and then I will be able to show you that how these expressions are going to look like and based on that we will try to conduct the recovery of interblock information. But surely at that moment if you recall I had uh, given you some hints that what type of complications you are going to encounter when you are trying to conduct such an analysis. For example, the values of sigma square, sigma beta square are going to be replaced by their estimated value and they are going to disturb the optimal properties of the estimator, but still we have to try our best to reach to a conclusion, we cannot leave the problem. So, that is what we are going to do in the next lecture, but for that it is very important that you come prepared with the entire analysis based on the inter block analysis and the recovery of inter block information. So, you try to practice it, try to revise it and I will see you in the next lecture till then, goodbye.